Hello and welcome to World Showcase at Epcot. We're here. Uh, they have started the uh, Disney 100 celebration today. Along with that, they have launched four new booths that were not previously open here at the Epcot International Food and Wine Festival. I just wanted to call it Food and Wine, but I, I got to be official in these. Uh, right. Introducing to you, uh, this is Andrew. Andrew, uh, what's going works on, guys? For us, and he's going to be helping me out uh, eating all these things today. Our first booth that we're hitting today is called Char and Chop. Yep. Right, Char and Chop. And uh, let's just start from the top. First up, we have a roasted porchetta with lemon parsley, salsa verde, and shaved fennel salad. Okay, moving over here, we have the grilled impossible spicy sausage with herb polenta, uh, puttanesca sauce, and ricotta, and uh, meat assorti, uh, trio shaved meats and baby arugula, pickled mustard seeds, truffle oil, and grilled ciabatta. Finally, we have a drink. This is the Bloody Mary with seaside grown Bloody Mary mix and curveball barbecue whiskey. I don't know what seaside grown, I didn't know you could grow no. Bloody Mary mix. Well, what? how do you think about that? Barbecue whiskey? Does that sound appetizing to you? In a no, Mary? and I love whiskey. I love <laughs> yeah, barbecue. Right. I'm from Kansas City. I love barbecue and yeah, I love of whiskey. Course. I don't, I'm not sure about barbecue whiskey. Th this, this looks good. I mean, the presentation is nice. It all looks light, like something you can get on the go. I, I don't know. That I would say like, the, so the impossible we know, the impossible sausage is probably the most common um, imitation meat on yeah, property. Yep. Uh, Tom loves this stuff. I'm 50-50 on it. But it, it depends. Yeah. It really depends. No, so much. This is all good. Well, what do you want to dive let's into start, first? Let's start with the impossible. Let's start it's a with spicy the, sausage, though. Spicy? All right, we'll so, go for you know, it. We'll a, see. I got silverware right here. So. Okay. He's like a let's knife. See. There you go. Maybe just take this little piece right here and, I don't know, just put it in the sauce, whatever they got going on. Yeah, get in there. All right, I'll get in here. Mm, boy. It is spicy. I know that, like, like I said, this is very popular, this sausage, because if you're doing, we'll just call it imitation meat. Yeah. Right, this is a pretty good representation. I'll say it's a little dry, but I think it's that's, it's not so dry to make it unappetizing. Right, listen, th this is a little bit dry. The spice is very mild. I wouldn't be too intimidated if you're not a fan of spicy food. You can go with this. I, I can't really tell a difference. As far as like imitation right. meat, this is not too far out it of the way. Tastes, it just tastes like slightly dry meat. And when you yeah. understand that yeah, it yeah. is actually not meat at all, um, it makes sense. Right. I still think it's it's pretty good. I think this is a good yeah. option. It shouldn't be intimidating to you. It's not. It's spicy, but not too su spicy. Yeah. It's vegan, but not too vegan. I think the cheese you know. actually cools it down. Maybe that's yeah. what I'm getting. Yeah. The, the There's a little of that. Sausage yeah. itself has a mild spice, but yeah, it cools it out. This is this is pretty good and a decent amount too. You can share this with someone. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Two yeah. People yeah. can split this. Yeah. No problem, and uh, get your day going. It's. It's not going to set the world on fire, but I think no, for, no, the, for no, these, no. they've made an effort to have more plant-based options. I think this is a good option. I think this is a and solid I, option. I if, think it's even maybe a good option if you're not into plant-based meat. I you couldn't know. really tell that much of a difference. It is a little bit drier, but if you're a fan of something that is vegan or if you just like the meats, you're going to like this as well. It's pretty good. I like the option. Not bad at all. All right. Uh, get on that porchetta now. Yeah. What's in this one again? No, let me see. Oh, my phone is burning up. That roasted porchetta with lemon, parsley, salsa verde, and shaved fennel salad. Fennel salad? The fennel is where we'd lose my girlfriend. She can't do fennel. <laughs> yeah? That's, okay. Unless she can smell it from a mile away. She's also one of the cilantro people, right? Okay. Oh, wow. I can taste the fat from there. That's nice. I love the flavor. The texture is a little different than what I expected. Yeah. I think it's because I'm on the edge. Yeah. But it's juicy enough that probably when we bought it, it was juicy. Yeah. We have, we have to, as you know, photograph things and whatever. I think the flavor of, of this is really spot on. I think it's Listen, it's very moist. I like what they have going on here with like uh, the um, the parsley and whatnot. This good. I do get that little bit of that lemon kick though. Right. When you have that in the back of your mouth, it's there. It's prevalent. And again, this is shareable. Two people could yeah. easily share this. It's $6.25. I feel like for in the context of festival food at Epcot, it's a reasonably good deal for something you could share. Uh, I didn't say what the the uh, impossible spicy sausage was. That's six bucks over here. Six bucks. That's a really. This is. I don't want to say it's a great deal, but it's a pretty good but deal. You're for getting a lot food. there. You're getting two yeah. chunks of the sausage. This is good too. 
Um, the fat there, I, I really like the fat that's going on there. That adds a good amount of texture to it. Lemon is the big thing though. Lemon is yeah. the big kick in the flavor here. So if you're good with that, you'll like that as well. And if you're one of those people that's wondering, by the way, where is Tom? Well, he's in the sky right now on his way to Paris. <laughs> so we're stuck here eating this and he's probably eating uh, great Parisian food later tonight. <laughs> right, right. I don't we, know. we miss you, Tom. We love you. We miss you. All right, uh, finally the meat assorti, a trio of shaved meats with baby arugula, pickled mustard seeds, truffle oil, and grilled ciabatta. This is six seventy-five. Yes. So that's a lot of ciabatta pickled there. Pickled mustard seeds. I think that's, that's what these are right Yeah, these here. little things right here. You see that, Jake? Can we... Check that out. Little baby mustard seeds. That sounds interesting. Let me give it a shot. Three different meats going on here. I'm gonna try this one. Okay. Mm, man, I might. Good? I, I wouldn't go that far. It's a little. Let me try some more. Say. Almost like a smoked meat. It's a little dry. Yeah, a little bit dry. The smokiness of the meat really does come through. Let me try some of these. That mustard seed, too. Mustard seed, yeah. Pretty powerful. Strong kick. It complements it okay, though. No, it's not too strong. Okay. But it's, I mean, it's a. It's a noticeable oh, it's, flavor. Oh, it's yeah. prevalent. Yeah. Add that on there. I actually like that. A little bit of a tang that goes on there. How about the bread? Man, the first three chews of it, I, I really liked it. And then there's a... There's some kind of taste at the end that I don't like. What, like a buttery? Mm -mm. Like a laboratory. Come on. Hold on. It might just be the char. I, I like the char, though. Yeah. Yeah. Too much, or no? I think, I think it's, fine. it's just right. I don't yeah. think it. I think the 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 actual preparation where it's crunchy on the outside mm -hmm. and soft in the middle is really kind of spot on. Yeah, for what they're trying to do. A lot of times you miss the market. Something like a mass-produced festival for this. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's nothing wrong with this. And you get four pieces here. Yeah. I mm -hmm. got spooked for a second there, yeah. but I, it's fine. Let me try this on top of this. You know, there you go. let me Make spice it up. That's a good combo. I like the char. The char is very prevalent on here, but I think it's a good mix. Make yourself some sandwiches. Again, shareable. There's a lot there. How much was that? Six dollars? Six seventy-five? All around six say. bucks. All of these are between six and seven dollars. Uh, this is six seventy-five. Yeah. No, this is a great uh, shareable option. If you have a few friends, just load it up, make a little mini sandwich for yourself. Good. I think the porchetta is better, and I think the impossible sausage is better. This is a good option, but it's kind of not as exciting, I would say. It's Listen, not. as far as flavor goes, shed is very good, strong lemon flavor. I think this wins, personally. Yeah, the spicy the best sausage. value for your price. The spicy sausage, not too spicy, but there's a lot there. I really like it. I'm one of the yeah. pickiest people around, and something like impossible sausage immediately turns me off, could, and I, I think it off, might, yeah. it's pretty good. I think it's pretty good. No, you really can't tell a difference. Uh, hit dry, but I think this is the winner at Char and Chop. All right, now for the bizarre Bloody Mary, uh, seaside grown Bloody Mary mix, and curveball with a K and no E, because not spelling is in. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. K U R <laughs> K U R V ball uh, barbecue whiskey. Barbecue you, whiskey. This this one. Oh boy. I don't even know what this costs because I don't have a picture of the uh, menu for this. I mean, we'll it definitely oh, doesn't look like your regular Bloody Mary for sure. I think all those drinks down. are 950. It's probably 950. Yeah. Okay. You wanna get I in don't there? really want the Vienna sausage that's in there. Now you want there. me to take it out? Yeah, go for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Some people love the garnish on a Bloody Mary. Sure. I'm not that guy. I get that. Oh boy. It tastes like I'm drinking vegetable soup, but it's spicy. Vegetable soup? I don't know. It's kind of a. Oh, here we go. Jake's handing me the. It was eleven dollars. This is eleven dollars. It's spicy, right? What's on the rim here? What are they coating the rim with? I don't know. It doesn't say. Yeah. I mean, we can speculate. Yeah. I don't have a problem with it. Uh, it's something savory and spicy. A little bit. Uh, of... Let me try that again, actually. I it's a like savory this drink. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, I. Yeah, this I, is this is like a barbecue 
in your backyard Bloody Mary. I mean, that's the best way to put I it. That spice is still you know, like it's, going. It, right? No, it's, no, that's mm. it's on my tongue. It's staying on your tongue there. Yeah. There's no way I would order this. But no. There are gonna be people that. Lo- I mean, just seeing it. Oh yeah. I wouldn't of have ordered it. It looks gross. <laughs> yeah, it looks like um, like little it mud water. Gross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't taste very. It doesn't taste bad. It's no, good. it it's doesn't. It's very spicy. This is for, it, a, for a cocktail. Yeah, for a cocktail for a Bloody Mary. This is on the savory side. Tastes like you're at a barbecue. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's all right. I wouldn't order again. I'd take it or leave it. $11, yeah. I might do something a little more refreshing. This is almost something to be better at a football tailgate on yes, a cold Yes, exactly, day, right? exactly, yeah. yeah. For the colder weather. It is football is season good. for some of you. Maybe you can... Uh, Didn't get the sauces. Let me try this real quick. It's a chilled right. sausage, so... Was it better or worse than the Impossible sausage? The booze-soaked cold Listen, sausage. The booze-soaked cold sausage. I can't believe I'm saying this again. The sound of just for me personally, any impossible type of meat, I get yeah. kind of turned off. I prefer this yeah. more than this sausage. I mean, you can be if you want to see for no, yourself. I, but I'm no, good, I'm good watching this, you eat it. This is actually better. So I would go without this. You can easily take Garnish it. Garnish your but, drink with the Impossible sausage. Just dunk it in there. Right now? No, I'm, I'm just telling. I'm telling okay, other okay, people. Okay. I mean, if you want to, yeah. you can. Yeah, no, no, I prefer the vegan sausage. We tell him. Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm still learning. But yeah, no, I go with the, the vegan sausage. Believe it or not, yeah. it's better. So now we're going to move on from Char and Chop. All right, let's go. Let's see what's next. All right, now we have the offerings from Wine and Wedge. That's yeah. just over here uh, near all these other new booths. So everything's kind of towards the front of World Showcase. They're all pretty then, close like to each other. Stuff. Yeah, all on World Showcase here. Uh, Andrew, you want to walk us through what we have? Yeah, sure. We have the Southern Pimento Cheese with bread, butter, pickled vegetables, and grilled bread, as you can see. Oh, bread and butter char. pickles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. That sort of thing. And then right here, we have a fig and balsamic souffle. Right here? Right here. It's pretty good. We have an artist palette of wine and cheese, which would be right here. Have a little bit of drinks right there. Flight action. And then we're gonna have an assorted arsenal cheeses and accompaniments. Ah, Got some bread, these Again, cheeses. they just say artisanal cheeses because they don't know what Man. cheese it's gonna be until they right. get closer to time. And as right. you can see, it's very hot outside. It's starting to melt. It's all right. Let's get into it though. Let's start over here. Yeah. Uh, this is the uh, pimento uh, dish. This is $5.25. And this bread looks very familiar. Uh, to the char and chop. I'm sure, I'm reasonably sure, that this is the same ciabatta that they have at Char and Chop. Yeah. Which it makes sense. They're nearby, right? Okay. A little bit of that. that. I'm going to do some of the pickled Get the vegetable. bread and butter. Yeah. Yeah. As people know, I'm not into pickles. But I know bread and butter are another polarizing kind of pickle. So. I love cheese. I love bread, obviously. You taste that? Very sweet flavor. Very sweet. Very sweet to the vegetables. I, I don't know. I don't like it. It's a little too sweet for me, the tang and everything. Let me get more of the um, the cheese right here. To the pimento cheese. I, I'm not a fan. I don't really like this. The char isn't there. It's a little too sweet. The, the, the pickled vegetables don't really mix with the cheese right there. I don't, I don't know about this one. Uh, I will say that is our cheapest at $5.25 of these options. Okay. Yeah. So if you've only got $5.25, this is the one thing that you can afford yeah. to get at that booth. Very affordable. I mean, again, I you can share. I might just go fill your water bottle and keep moving. Right, I mean, you got three slices of, of the ciabatta right here, it looks like. I mean, very shareable, but I, I wouldn't go for this. Not my thing. either. Yeah. Um, all right, let's try this souffle over here. Uh, it's a, it just says cheese souffle on here. Uh, yeah. This costs $5.75. Um, yeah, let me see that. One second. We lost our spot there. Yeah, I mean, it fig. doesn't really say anything. It's just a, it's a fig and balsamic souffle. That's what they give us in the book. So, let's dive right into that. Here, you go first. I'll yeah. put this receipt See over See the here. fig juice right there. Um, very soft, you can already tell. Easy to cut into. And then, let me just dip it in that. Little yeah, fig dip it sauce. in there. Yeah. Go crazy. Yeah, let's see that. Big piece. Whoa. 
This cuts almost too easy. Yeah, very easy, like butter. Uh, if it cuts like butter, that's because it's off of stuff like this. Wow. That's what I was saying comes from. I'm getting I mean, like little seeds in like Yes, there grittiness. are a little bit of seeds there. It's a grittiness. It's very, very soft, mushy almost, but there's something there. A little thick texture. Sweetness. Yeah. But the grittiness, I don't care for. Yeah. The texture overall is a little, it doesn't necessarily feel like what it looks like. No. Again, uh, better than that. Uh, pretty I like sweet. I it almost tastes like a dessert, right? I guess th this a this tastes like a full-on dessert. dessert. The sweetness from the fig isn't overpowering like it was for this. This was way too sweet. That's not bad at all. I can't get me. over the grittiness though. I'm still crunchy. Yeah, the texture is a little bit weird. It's, it's mushy. There's, there's a little bit of in graininess. The is that in the, yeah, yeah you see that. the seeds right there's in that seeds fig, in there. fig juice right there. A little so. gritty for my taste. Yeah. Uh, still not bad. I think it's a little bit of a savory sweet. It's on this a savory side of sweet. If yes, it's a yeah. Of sweet, yes. We're towards the savory side. Not too sweet. The but... first bite confused me. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Like, exactly. Oh, there it is. It's it's a lot softer. It cuts very easily. A little mushy, but I prefer the sweetness from the fig. But there is a little bit of unusual texture there. Again, five seventy five. Yeah. It's not terribly expensive. Uh, it's not my favorite thing I've had today so far. It is better than the pimento uh, for sure this is way too sweet uh, it just doesn't mix I would go with this this is the winner right now all right now let's try a few of these artisanal cheeses here yeah um, the cheese accoutrement okay right here yes um, that that what looks like brie is yeah. melting okay so I'm gonna try to clean off my knife a little bit and yeah figure out a reasonable way to evaluate this yeah get in there of course I'll get a little brie I'm there scared of a little brie um, the only real thing they give you for it is these little kind of crusty pieces of bread. What's in there? Is that like... I can't tell uh, what's in there if you want to... Raisin or a fig? I, like, yeah, what, what is I'm that? I'm not sure. It could be raisin. It could be a fig. It could be Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's see. Oh. Oh, boy. <laughs> you hear that crunch? <laughs> all right. That's crunchy all the way through. Yeah. Hard oh, crunchy? Fig. Yeah. Pretty sure it's fig. That makes sense. Uh, yeah, you got the fig jam right here. This is delicious. I wasn't prepared for it to be so crunchy all the way through. I don't mind I it though. No, I wouldn't mind a couple other options of things to spread the cheese onto. Sure, yeah. All these different cheeses. Would we want some of the Tabata? Would that be an option? Yeah, or? we can use that. Yeah. No. Why not? It's not the best way to evaluate this dish. But. Uh, again, the, yeah, but when you're here, you can mix it up. The, the sweetness from the fig jam, very similar to the fig souffle. I without like the, the grittiness. There's yeah, no without grittiness. the grittiness. That's a big thing. I don't mind the crunch from the bread. The brie is standard. Actually, that jam it's might be the same, same stuff. It might be yeah, the no, same it's jam. very similar, but it's not as gritty. That gritty is not as yeah, prevalent, no. probably just because you're putting it on something crunchy. You don't notice it. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I'm trying this other cheese. I'm, honestly, they didn't tell us what the cheese is. I don't know what it is. It's all a mystery. This is very good. What does that taste like? I'm gonna just try this on its own. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's some kind blue of blue cheese. cheese here. I love the blue cheese. Oh, definitely blue cheese. It's a little chalky, which is normal for blue cheese, but... A little too chalky for my liking. Are these Not Marcona almonds, like in a... I yeah, can't it's like one it. it's of those bars like peanut that you get. Brittle at yeah, this peanut point. brittle, yeah. It, they look like Marcona almonds. I can't <laughs> even cut this. Look at this. I need get metal flatware yeah. for this, or my spike to be spork. This, Let's give it a nice I, stab. <laughs> you got a hammer or something? Yeah, so side it's note. Not, it's yeah. not brittle though. Like I couldn't smash it like glass, right? It's kind of, oh. because it's got like a, it's got some give to it, but it, I don't know. You no, yeah, it's a hard type I'm of brittle. I'm towel on that. Uh, yeah, I can't just do that. Just pick the whole thing up and take a bite, see what happens. Okay. Yeah, I'm just not going to be polite. Just going to get in there. I have napkins. All right. That's nasty. Is it? Yeah, you try it up. 
Uh, great. You, that's no, nasty. Try yeah, it. Yeah. No, 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 no. I don't really like it. So what you're expecting is something like peanut brittle. I'm expecting that because it looks like that. You get something very savory. A lot more savory. Yeah. No, I don't love What's it. What's the coating of that? It has like a, almost a smokiness to it. Yeah. Like a barbecue. I'm not sure what that is. And actually, you know, I'm sure one of our culinary experts in the chat knows what this is. <laughs> right. They don't tell us, right? We don't know. They just give you a plate full of stuff and stuff to you to figure it out. Yeah, figure it out. Uh, what I can oh. figure out is that I don't particularly care for that. No, not It looked like something that. that was interesting and I might want to try, but. Nothing is too extraordinary here. It's about your standard cheeses that you'd get from the brie, the blue cheese, what looked like brittle. A little too hard, I wouldn't like that. What about this one right here? There's one more. Uh, that's like, is that honeycomb? Is that like a little piece of yeah. honey? Yeah. Try the honey. Okay. This accoutrement though is only $7, which is, I mean, there's other places where you get this much cheese and it costs $22 at Disney Springs or at some of the resort hotel restaurants. Again, it's one of those things, you take one bite of each thing, mm -hmm. besides the brittle, whatever that is. But um, it's good for sharing. I, I wouldn't go out of your way to get this, personally. All right. I want to go out of your way. So now we come to the most expensive item here. This is the $18 flight. Yeah. Right. So the, the flight, like I said, I'm pretty sure it's $18. And um, the, I don't think they describe it in there. Um, nope. They didn't put it in the book. It's, uh, but we know what the wines are. Now the rest of it is stuff we've already had, right? We've already had these crispy pieces of bread. Mm -hmm. We've already had very the pimento. Similar. We've already yep. had the honey, the blue cheese, the fig jam, and this cheese. So uh, this is really about the wine at this point. Yeah. So it starts off to the left, from left to right, or your right to left. Uh, this is a Riesling. It's called Selbach Oster Zeltinger Sonnenhur Riesling <laughs> Spätzle. You're doing a great job. Yeah, I don't know. At first, <laughs> I thought it said Spätzle, like the side dish <laughs> at the buffet, and I was like, "That's gross." <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. Um, no, Spätzle. Uh, uh -huh. I'm, I apologize to the real German speakers out there. I, We're I trying over German. here. Uh, I can pronounce this. Hartley Apple Brandy. This is from Kentucky. That looks good. Or this one's from Mosul, Germany. Or Mosul, Germany? Yeah. This, for just, this is just Kentucky. We don't even know what yeah. city. Looks like a traditional apple. And then from all the drink. way over in St. Pete, uh, Florida, we have uh, Florida Orange Groves Winery Black and Blue Port. Okay. So, uh, let's start with the Riesling. I expect this to be very sweet. Yeah. Typically for a Riesling. Frosted, not too sweet. Very sweet. Dry. Oh. Wow. Let's see. Dry, sweet. Pretty standard. Yeah, pretty, I mean, pretty standard. But I mean, again, nothing I would go crazy for. Uh, Hartley Apple Brandy. This seems like something you would drink on a hayrack ride in right, Wisconsin yes. in November, not in Florida where it's very hot. It gets you in the fall mood though. I hope it's good. I'm excited for that one. Oh yeah. Yeah? It's lovely. I mean, I don't know under what circumstance it would be best. Has a little spice. It's almost like apple and fireball. That is the perfect way yeah. to put this. This tastes like apple flavored fireball. So. And it has some legs like a liqueur too, right? It'll yeah. stick to the side yeah, of the glass. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. I think it's smooth. Nice. Apple flavored fireball. It's the best way to put it. <laughs> All right, now we get to the Florida Orange Groves Winery Black and Blue Port. Uh, St. Petersburg, noted for its wineries and uh, wine growing regions of right. Pinellas County. Right, I yeah. Guess. I love that lovely ruby red color to it. It's nice. Yeah, I, I definitely smell. Wow. I'm trying to identify that smell. Oh. It's a little overwhelming. The mouthfeel is kind of fuzzy. Yeah. It smells fuzzy too. Yeah, little, little dry, little, I mean, I, I mean, can definitely taste, yeah, I mean, there's a citrus type flavor to it. I feel from this. This is the most this. adventurous of the It is, it, flavors, I mean, right? th this is the most, yeah, you're gonna have the most fun with this. This is pretty standard, the Rizzling, dry, sweet, apple, you know, apple flavor apple fireball. fireball. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like that. But yeah, this is the most interesting. It I is actually wine. I don't want to denigrate the wine making process. Right, by, right. Well, it's brandy. Uh, isn't brandy a form of wine? It's a fortified wine of some kind. It's alcohol. 
Yeah, you get kind of a citrus yeah. taste to this. Um, it's fine though. Yeah, it's fine. I, I would keep these two. This one I, I could care less. The Riesling. The Riesling's pretty yeah, forgettable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Overall, eighteen dollars, but you get three uh, tastings. It's not yeah. a terrible deal. You could get a lot more of this cheese for the whatever seven dollars over here. Uh, and then all the money's in the wine here. And personally, I would get this dish over this one because you're getting some of the same cheeses here right. that you see across the board at the Without booth. the peanut brittle you didn't like. <laughs> yeah, that was way, way, way too hard. And also, it's look fun. at the presentation. Look at that. You have a little palate. You can be like Gelatoni. Be official, stick your thumb in there. There you go. Uh, happy trees. Artist palette right there. I, I think the winner out of all these things, for me, if it wasn't the grayness, I like the souffle. It's I a would savory, go, sweet tree. I play it safe. If I were with a group of my friends, I'd just get the uh, accoutrement. Yeah. And then I'd just get a beer or something. I don't I don't need all these different wines. To right. Throw, like it's confusing sure. my mouth. Yeah. There's too much going on here. Throw the brittle out there, have that. That's good. Keep in mind, these are just our opinions. And we are uh, not trained food reviewers. We just tell <laughs> right. you what, what we feel. What we like and what we don't. All right, we're moving on. All right. All right. So we're at Bubbles and Brine now. We were going to go over to Swirled Showcase. It is not open. Yeah, so I mean, maybe well, they need a couple more days to bring it all together. Spoiler, we were gonna have four new booths for you, but it looks like this is the last new booth until that opens. We so. may do that and then add that to this video. Yeah. We're not sure how long it's gonna take to open. But at any rate, we have, uh, well, this is seafood and yes. uh, and champagne, or yeah, seafood and champagne basically in this booth, right? Very excited for Bubbles this. It's a, good, it's a good pair for me. So uh, we have a shrimp cocktail, um, jumbo shrimp cocktail, 14 bucks. And uh, that's uh, with Prosecco cocktail sauce and grilled lemon. Um, if you've watched any of our reviews, you know that I always am a complainer when we get cold seafood because my position is if you're going to have something that was a living creature, right. I'd like it to be served warm. Yeah, right, exactly. Cold cuts may be the uh, exception there. So uh, Left it out a little and too jumbo, long, yeah. I don't like jumbo shrimp. I like the smaller bite-sized shrimp. Yeah, but, these are looking like prawns right here. I mean, these, yeah, are, these are big. big. Ones. These are big old prawns. Yeah. Looks good. Why don't you go first? Okay. You can fork and knife it. We can pretend to be sophisticated. Yep. Yeah, if you want to do that, just get right in there. All right, let's see here. Big pieces of shrimp. Looks pretty standard when it comes to the cocktail sauce. It's got nice. Prosecco cocktail sauce, whatever that means. But Yeah, whatever that means. Pour some Prosecco in there, I guess. All right, big pieces of shrimp. Again, it's $14 for this. You're getting two pieces of shrimp. The shrimp, I have to say, tastes very similar to something that you would get at Publix. I, I have to be, on the freshness scale, this tastes kind of... A little on the fishy side. Yeah, yeah. The sauce is fine. This is not something I would normally eat anyway. I know right. there are people that just go crazy anytime that something that swims in the water is available to eat. Right, I'm, not, I'm a huge seafood fan, but this, I was this just- It's not my favorite shrimp I've ever had. I have right. I don't is, think it's bad. I just think it's no, kind of No, it's like, not. It's eh, standard, I, feel, I could make this at home type thing. This also tastes like something I'm gonna be tasting the rest of the afternoon, right? I'm just right. kind of like, right. I'm gonna be burping yeah. up for, uh, <laughs> uh, shrimp taste. It's not gonna be pleasant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let me be official and yeah, use do the, the lemon. lemon. I always do a squirt of lemon. I'm gonna go. have a shrimp cocktail. So let me see if that <laughs> makes a difference. Let's see there. Seco cocktail sauce. It's a standard shrimp cocktail. I don't know how else to say it. Yeah. They're trying to be fancy with the cocktail sauce, but the pretty standard shrimp, affair. Yeah. yeah. All right. How about these? Uh, what do we have here? Crab legs. How much? How much did we pay for these? These were $12. That's not bad. Actually, less. you're getting more here, it looks like, than the shrimp. $12, and you're going to have stone ground mustard sauce. That's what With we're seeing here in the middle. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Looks a little I bit. I just want to sing the shiny song. Where like, looks shiny. A little, yeah, right, right, right. This looks a little DiGiorno. Yeah? A little bit, right? I better than DiGiorno. Yeah, well, OK. Let me see. See, I just rip it out. You're just going to rip it out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I'm just gonna cut a small piece. I don't yeah, know. I might have to rip it out. I'm just gonna rip it out. All right. All right. I might have got a little too much of the ground uh, mustard on this one. Yeah. One, two, three, go. Ooh, this is nice. You no, know, I like this. Yeah, this is nice. 
a slight sweetness to it, which I enjoy. And I actually think the mustard pairs well, pretty I well. I thought the mustard this. was gonna overpower yeah. it, but I don't think it does. I think it, it's a good compliment to it. Yeah. I'm gonna try it with your lemon on it. Why not? Here, I'll, yeah. I'll do it for you. Let me actually get another one, because okay. I'm having a hard time getting that out. Yeah, just go nuts on that. Yeah, that's a lot of lemon. Well, <laughs> here we go. Oh yeah. Slight spiciness, what you expect from the mustard here. A really slight sweetness to the meat of the crab here. I enjoy it. I you dunk really it good. in there, you take you take a bite out. This is fun to have with friends. I enjoy this. Again, I'm more partial to seafood. You have to know so that going what, in. But I would but, do, like what I do at the festival though, is one of the most popular dishes is that seafood fisherman's pie. Yes. Oh, in Ireland. Yes. And uh, that is hot, so I like that seafood better. Right. All chilled weird. here, yeah. I'm just weird. No, no, I, I get it, I get it. But this is like seafood bar food. Yeah. You know what I mean? You go to an oyster bar, this is what you would get. Yeah. I enjoyed it. This is much better than this. I can't recommend this. Less money, you get a few of these The claws, claws are good here. and cheaper. Yes. Uh, and the, the shrimp is a no. Yeah, that's a no. I would get this though. This is fun and it's light, important. Well, there you have it. That's uh, Bubbles and Brine, and that is all of the newest booths from here at the Food and Wine Festival for the Disney first day of Disney 100. If uh, Swirl Showcase does open, I'm Jason. For WDWNT. We're here today trying out this World Showcase. It just opened yesterday um, with the Food and Wine Festival. First up, we have our Nitro Cake Pop. So this is a cake pop that is dipped in warm chocolate and then silver puffy things. And then it's dipped in liquid nitrogen to freeze it and we've got a couple pictures of that process uh, happening and then they give it to you and in this hot sun it's already unfreezing and starting to melt uh, but here it is it looks cool I'll let you have the first bite okay. that's pretty good It's cold. It is cold. Um, it's almost like a it's it's a it's a brownie. It more is than a it's cake very pot. very heavy cake. Yeah, I definitely would say it's more similar to a brownie than a cake pop. Yes. The it's almost like another like the bottom layer is a little bit thicker than the rest of it. I think that's where that chewiness is coming from. I think you're right. It's pretty good. Um, but it's good. It's dipped in good chocolate. The chocolate is great. Um, and the little silver things make uh, make it a little crunchy. Yeah. Um, so overall, it's good. I'd say if it's a hot day, it's a this is fantastic because it's cold. Yeah, um, it's fun. Don't stand around for too long taking pictures like we did, or it's going to start melting. Um, but there it is. <laughs> All right. Next, we have the Fanta Grape Soda Float. Uh, this is a very small cup of grape soda with some vanilla soft serve in it. And as you can see, it's already melting quite a lot, but there you go. It doesn't, it doesn't look quite as appetizing as I would like. I mean, it certainly doesn't look as appetizing now as it did when we first got it. It's fair too. Um, but... No? No, thank you. You don't like grape? Um, I like grape. It, to be honest, it tastes like a snow, a grape snow cone that's uh, melted. With a little bit of ice cream. That's my opinion. It's very grapey. It's very grapey. Yeah. As you would expect from Fanta grape soda. <laughs> um, and it has ice cream in it. I don't know that a grape 
Ice cream float is a novel concept. I think it's existed before. Um, and this is this is six dollars and twenty five cents for this little cup, which I'm kind of annoyed at. This fantastic thing is only four dollars and seventy five cents. So value for the money is not, not in the soda float. Yeah, I'd rather have a, a grape slushie than that, though. To yeah, be honest. Like, sure. It's not even, it's okay. I would I would choose this over that for sure. Absolutely. And we'll be back with more in a moment. Back again. We have the salted caramel three sisters. Oh goodness. Three daughters. Three daughters. It's the three daughters toasted <laughs> coconut porter float. It's the three, three daughters days. toasted coconut porter float. It's it's beer with ice cream. Sounds like the perfect Epcot um, beverage. It does. And it's got salted caramel ice cream in it. That. So you can see that. Um, this first started out, if you saw the pictures, this started out full, uh, but the beer was very foamy. And so now the beer as it has settled has actually um, sank to the bottom and the ice cream has floated as it as it melts so this is a mess at this moment but i think the taste uh is really what what counts and so we're going to yeah. taste it let's do Go it ahead. all right just gonna... yeah. yeah i think it's a pretty pretty cool combination i want you to taste it first so i don't spoil it for you but that's good yeah it's a cool combination I think the beer, even though it's on the bottom, that refreshing ice cream on top kind of puts it all together. The salted caramel ice cream, now that it has melted a little bit and swirled with the beer, it's almost like, a almost like one of those alcoholic milkshakes. It is. That's true. Um, I didn't even think about it like but that. But the salted caramel is a great flavor to go with mm -hmm. the toasted coconut porter. It really sweetens the beer a little bit. Exactly. Um, it's not so bitter. The the, co the toasted coconut shreds on top are are good. I, I don't know that they're necessary, but of course it, it's an Epcot festival. They have to put some random thing on top of stuff. Um, but I think it's really good. Um, I think again, the more it mixes together, the better it'll become too. So it's not one of those beverages or treats that you can have here at Epcot that's going to melt and then it's not what you want this it is, anymore. This is going to be better. The more that it melts, I think the better it's going to be. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not even a, a beer drinker and this is something I would get again. Porter is not my favorite style of beer, but with the salted caramel ice cream in there, it's really good. It's Absolutely. a great mix of flavors, the, the caramel and the and the coconut. Right. So I'd highly recommend this. Absolutely. Can I add something? good. All right, we are back. We are having the uh, Berry Fizz Fragolino Red Sparkling Wine Float. It's a mouthful. What is Fragolino? That's a great question. I have no idea. I, I doesn't have a definition in our little handbook here, um, but there's some vanilla soft serve on top and I am familiar with what that is. Well, there so. we go. Perfect. And I think those are little raspberry pieces. That's what it looks like. It looks tasty. It looks good. Yeah. You can try it. Go for it. That's pretty good. Wow. Um, it's a really cool combination. Similar to the beer, I think the ice cream makes it a little bit better. The, the ice, so I'm not a big sparkling wine person, but this is kind of a little on the sweet side, I think, because it's red. Maybe frago, fragolino means sweet red sparkling wine or something. I don't know. Uh, but we'll have to look that up. Um, it's good, though. This is like, again, like a like an alcoholic milkshake. Uh, except it's made with red sparkling wine. Yeah. Um, I like it. I think if you're into sparkling wine, you'll like it. Um, if you get a raspberry in there, even better. It is. The raspberry little chunks are a nice touch, but they're so, so good when you get one. Because it gives um, you that little extra bitter. Yes. I think the sweetness that you were talking about yes. helps even that out a little bit more. 
Um, I want to go back to something. Okay. So we talked about the grape soda float at the very beginning of this video. And we here at WWNT don't like to waste food like some other websites might. And so we've let this sit here uh, and all of the ice cream has now melted. And I wanted to tell you, this is so much better now. This is like an orange creamsicle, but it's great. You're not wrong. That is weird. It's, it's so not much not better. As it no, was. it's the huh. the ice. The melted ice cream has diluted the grape soda. That was really good. And if you like orange cream sickles and you like grape, well, this is a grape cream sickle basically. Yeah. That's good. So there we go. Look at that. Look at you. All right, we've got a uh, couple more things to get here, so we'll be back in a moment. Okay, we are back with the last two items from Swirled Showcase. We have the frozen apple pie and the cinnamon apple cider. And what we didn't realize is that the frozen apple pie is actually just a float made with the cinnamon apple cider and some crumbs on the top. Uh, so this cinnamon, the other thing that I didn't realize until we got it was that the cinnamon apple cider is not just like apple cider. It is a sparkling apple cider made by three daughters and it's non-alcoholic. Uh, so this sounds fantastic. Most, most everything three daughters uh, products I've had have been phenomenal. So uh, I'm excited about this. And then the float adds the vanilla ice cream and some crumbly stuff on top. Which hasn't gone wrong yet, so. Right. Exactly. I'm so, excited. here we go. Right. I think go we ahead. should start with like the regular cider. That right? makes sense. Yeah. So we know what, we know what the base What's is. building into yes. it. I mean, like you said, uh, Three Daughters does not go Oh, wow. Well. It's so That's good. really good. <laughs> That's, that's tremendous. It's the perfect amount of apple crisp that you want in your apple cider. And it's got a hint of cinnamon. It's fairly sweet. Yeah. So if you like your ciders dry, this is not it. But again, this is yeah. non-alcoholic. So yeah. it's probably made more for kids and um, kids will love it. It's like a sparkly apple juice. Yes, it is. It's exactly sparkly apple juice. <laughs> um, All right. And now we've got the float, which is the sparkly apple juice plus vanilla ice cream. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know what? There's like some apple pie filling apple they stuck apple. on top of that too. I didn't see that until just now. I swallowed it though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is good. That kind of tastes like Christmas to me. I don't know about that. That's what I think. So this is good. Um, there's almost too much ice cream in this cup and not enough of the cider. Yeah, I agree. Um, they seem, the, the cup seems to be too small. Again, this is $6.25 just like the uh, the grape soda float. Uh, these cups seem to be too small for what they're trying to do here. You've got three daughters. Cinnamon apple cider is phenomenal, as as are all three daughters products that I've ever had. Um, the the float, uh, which is that cider plus vanilla ice cream, some apple pie filling, and some crumbles on top, is is good. Uh, I think the problem is that they try to do too much in too small of a cup. So you get too much ice cream, not enough of the cider. They really need to make this portion size a bit bigger. For $6.25, I think they could afford to do that. Uh, but this is good. I, I, I like it. Um, but I just think it execution leaves a little to be desired. Um, so there we go. That's, that's the end of this world showcase. Now, this being Epcot, and Epcot's original mission was edutainment, uh, I'm going to go into the edutainment phase of this review and talk about Fragolino because I looked it up. Fragolino is an Italian red wine produced in Veneto with a grape that is literally called Uva Fragola, which means strawberry grape. It's a wine that has a strawberry flavor um, and it was produced as a sweet refreshing summer wine um, and we had the sparkling version of it 
uh, in that in the Fragolino float. And so when I kind of guessed that Fragolino meant sweet red wine, I, I kind of wasn't wrong. Uh, strawberry wine. So it's good. Uh, anyway, there's your edutainment for the day. Thanks for joining us for this video review. And uh, check out everything else that's on our channel. See you next if, time. If you like this, click the subscribe button. And that thing, other thing, the subs and the bell for notifications. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you later.